Good morning, I'm Robert Dean Steele, and this is your daily Bible class or your commentary on the Bible. Let's open our time with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you today for the Word of God, and we thank you, Lord, for what we're going to learn today from Luke chapter 4 on the life of Jesus Christ. Well, here we find ourselves. Now, we've just, last time we were together, we discovered that Jesus had been tempted in the wilderness, and we discovered how Jesus defeated the enemy with the word of God. So then in verse number 14, it says, Jesus returned with the power of the Spirit to Galilee, and news of him went throughout all the whole region, and he taught in their synagogues, and many were glorified and all glorify God for that. So Jesus returns from his temptation. He's overcome the enemy. Now remember, we overcome the the we overcome the enemy by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimony. So Jesus was teaching. Um, he was anointed by the power of the Holy Spirit. That is how we overcome the enemy. And he taught in synagogues, and all were amazed, and God was glorified. Now, when he came to his hometown of Nazareth, when he had brought, been brought up, as custom was, he went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up and read. So here's a couple of things you need to know. Jesus thought and it was his custom to go to the house of the Lord on the Sabbath day. And uh, so for those who say, well, Jesus, you know, never did. Yes, he did. He gave us his example. There are people out there who don't believe that the house of the Lord is important. According to Jesus, it is. And it was Jesus's habit to go there. So if if you're a follower of Jesus Christ, then the house of the Lord must be a top priority. Now, also, we see something here that in Jesus's day, instead of, of um, um, and we'll get to that in a moment, it says he stood up and read the scriptures. So they read the scriptures. There was an honoring of the scriptures. And then he was handed the book of Isaiah. And when he opened the book, he found a piece of scripture. And it's Isaiah 61 verses 1 and 2. And he said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he's anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor, to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captive, and recovery to the sight of the blind, and to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to preach the acceptable year of the word. So this portion of scripture is outlining that Jesus was first of all, un the Spirit of the Lord was on him, which he was. He was anointed to preach the good news to the poor. He was to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captive, to bring sight to the blind, to set those who are in bondage free, and to preach the acceptable will of the Lord. So that was the outline of Jesus' ministry. That's why Jesus came also as well to bring redemption. Then he closes the book and gave it back to the attention and then sat down and all the eyes were um uh, fixed on him. Now, Jesus had just come from his his uh, um, temptation. He was filled. He was speaking. Now he was back in his hometown. He had stood up, read Isaiah 61, 1 and 2, says this. Then he he they all fixed his eyes on him. And in those days, instead of standing up, the teacher would sit down. Now, we, we, of course, in in many of our churches, what we do is we stand up and uh, preach from that per perspective. But in those days, they sat down. And then he looked at them and said, today, the scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. Jesus is basically saying this scripture that Isaiah had written so many centuries before, some seven centuries before, is now being fulfilled. The Messiah is standing in front of you, or in this case, sitting in front of you. And so all bore witness and marveled at his gracious words, which proceeded out of his mouth, which uh, they said, is this not Joseph's son? So then Jesus afterwards begins to preach, and uh, they were marveling over the words that he was. But then they said something, isn't this J Joseph's son? And Jesus said to them, you surely say this promise to me, physician, heal yourself. Whatever you heard in Capernaum, you also hear in our country. So he says, the same things that you heard in all the communities that I've given around, you are hearing here today. But he says, a prophet is never, ever 
Uh, he goes on to say, Assuredly, I say to you, a prophet is never accepted in his own country. That's because they know him. That's because they they knew him when he was a child, and they forget that when God's anoints, everything changes. Well, he said this, Truly, I say there were many widows that were in Israel in the days of Elijah when the heaven was shut up, and three days and months, he says, and there was a great famine. But he only came to the widow as Zarephath. And many lepers were in Israel during the time of Elisha the prophet, but he only cleansed Naaman the Syrian. And all those who were in the song were filled with wrath. Though so Jesus uses two examples. He says, listen, he says, in the days of Elijah, he says the only one that was touched was the Syrophoenician woman. And then also when um, uh, he says there were many lepers, but only Naaman was. And they became indignant. Now listen to this. They rose up and thrust him out of the city. And they led him to the, to the top of the hill, which the city was built on, that they might throw him over. But then he did something. He went out passing in the three, through in the midst of them. So they got really angry over the whole situation. But Jesus, Jesus, they took him right to the edge of the, of the town. And they were going to throw him off. But then, it, because, as John says, it wasn't Jesus' time, he passed between them. So Jesus in the synagogue basically told them that the Messiah had come. And then he uses those two examples. And then they get angry and they want to kill him. I mean, that's the extent of the dividing line of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ came to set the captive free. But when people do not want to be set free, there's going to be a reaction. And don't be surprised if people are not very open to you telling them about Jesus. And you might even get a, a violent response. You probably won't have this type of thing happen. But remember, when you tell them about the good news of Jesus Christ, when you tell them there's going to be a reaction one way or another. Just a little thought for you today. My name is Robert Dean Steele. This is your daily Bible class. You have yourself a great and godly day.